All right, let's talk a little bit about spies. If you remember earlier on when we started this course, we talked about during the intro section about how Jasmine doesn't need you to use the DOM and does in that by its virtue, the browser for the test to actually work. And when testing third party APIs, you don't actually go and write code that's going to call the API or going to call some library and you're not going to test the library. Typically, what you're going to test is that your code calls the library and passes the correct data and spies are really great for that. If we go into our user JS class, if you remember, we have this get full name property, which is going to return the user's first and last name or the first and last name and middle initial. We have a new method here called say my name. And all that's going to do is use the window API to call the alert method, which will pop it up and actually say in that alert box, the user's full name. Now, this is especially useful, and I chose this to be specific because Scrimba actually can't call the alert method because of the way the platform is built and nothing's going to pop up. But we can write our test to actually see that it does get called using a spy. So it's quite perfect for this example. So if we go and take our model and we set our first name here, oops, our first name equal to Dylan. And then we go ahead and set our model dot last name equal to drill. We need to set up our spy on, this is how we set up spies. It takes in two parameters. The object you want to listen to, in this case, window, followed by a string. And what's our string? Well, it's our alert method, the name of what you want to spy on for that object. We are then going to take our model and simply call, say, my name, like any other act, because that's what we're testing here. And then we're going to write our expectation. Now, what's our expectation? Our expectation is that our window.alert was, and this is a new matcher, to have been called. That's our expectation. And what do we get? Of course it does. And you can see if we were to go over to user.js and change this from window.alert to window.confirm, this is going to fail. And that's because we're not spying on that. And vice versa, if we save it now and we go over to our main JS file and we change this to window.confirm and we save it, this is also going to fail. And that's because we d we're not listening for a alert anymore. We're listening to confirm. Now we can also make this a little bit more specific. There's another expectation here that or another matcher when we listen to our, our window dollar and that's to have been called with and we can actually see what it it was called with the properties that our user js file here was called with what is the the value we're passing full name so in our expectation here we're expecting it to be dylan israel and we can save it and bam it's our test still pass and if I change this to Dolan, of course, that would fail, right? We expected our spy to be called with uh, Dylan Israel, but it was actually called with Dolan Israel, which no one wants to be a Dolan. And because this is more specific, you can, and actually it's not only testing that the window has been called, window alert has been called, but also has been called with the property, we can eliminate this first expectation. 